In Tennessee, Kentucky, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, this is a big Mississippi Valley, Mississippi, Washington, California, and Missouri, thank you. Man. And so um, I wanted to extend that greeting on behalf of the brethren. Um, your pastor and elders have been involved in a two-year process, which is expressing your commitment to be involved, and it also um, is our commitment to you as a presbytery to help bless you in all the ways that are possible, certainly in our prayers, but in any ways that we can be of a blessing to you, that's, that's our role. So let us pray. Father, we do thank you for your word preached today. We thank you that you have brought us to your table to announce in significant ways uh, the gospel of Christ, his reconciling power, his ability to take a people out of this world and to make them a new humanity, uh, a people that are set apart, not because of anything that is righteous within them, but because of the gracious gift of Jesus Christ. That we bear in the power and the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit in our lives to, to draw us to one another and to find comfort and solace in each other's giftings and um, in the gospel which we all share. We pray that you'd continue to bless this expression of your communion, this expression of your kingdom as we express these vows before you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Continuing in office without reinstallation, all right, but simply renewing the vows. And so I would ask the elders and deacons to give ear to uh, these vows and then um, answer in the affirmative, if you will. And then we will ask Reverend Stark uh, to answer the vows as well, which are just subtly different, having to do with his office as minister. And then we will have the members of the congregation uh, stand and renew their vows. So elders and deacons, do you believe in one God? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do you confess anew the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and acknowledge him head over all things for the church, which is his body? Do you reaffirm your belief in the Bible, the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments, as the word of the living God, the only perfect rule of faith and practice, infallible in all that it teaches, and inerrant in the original manuscripts, and to which nothing is to be added, and from which nothing is to be taken at any time or upon any pretext. Do you accept the doctrines of this church, contained in the Westminster Confession of Faith and Catechisms, as founded on the Word of God, and as the expression of your own faith, and do you resolve to adhere thereto? Do you accept the government, discipline, and worship of the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church? Do you accept the office of elder or deacon in this congregation? And do you promise to perform faithfully all the duties of the office? And do you promise to endeavor by the grace of God to live your life in Christian witness before the church and in the world? Do you promise to submit in the spirit of love to the authority of the session and to the higher courts of the church? Do you promise in all things to promote the unity, peace, and purity, and prosperity of the church elders and deacons. What is your answer? We do. We do. We do. <laughs> Reverend Stark, do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and do you confess anew the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and acknowledge him head over all things to the church, which is his body? Do you affirm that the Bible alone, being God-breathed, is the word of God written, infallible in all that it teaches, and inerrant in the original manuscripts? 
Do you accept the doctrines of the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church contained in the Westminster Confession of Faith and Catechisms as founded on the Word of God and as the expression of your own faith? And do you resolve to adhere thereto? Do you accept the government, discipline, and worship of the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as agreeable to and founded on the Word of God? Do you promise to submit in the spirit of love to the authority of the Presbytery in subordination to the General Synod and to promote the unity, peace, purity, and prosperity of the Church? Do you sincerely resolve to fulfill all your responsibilities in your home life and in all your relations with your fellow man, following after righteousness, faith, and love? Do you accept upon your ministry with a desire to glorify God and to be instrumental in strengthening His Church? Do you promise to preach the gospel in its purity and simplicity, declaring the whole counsel of God, and to perform all your official duties with zeal and faithfulness, seeking the salvation of sinners? I do so receive, acknowledge, promise, and covenant in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Thanks be to God. And those of you who are professing members, I invite you to stand with your elders and minister. Do you confess that you are a sinner in the sight of God, that you deserve his punishment, that you are unable to save yourself, and that you are without hope of salvation except for God's love and mercy? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God and the Savior of sinners, and do you receive and trust in him alone for your salvation? Do you accept the Bible comprised of the Old and New Testaments as the written word of God, and that is the only perfect rule of faith and how to live? Do you promise to trust in the guidance and strength of the Holy Spirit so that you can live all of life as a Christian, following the example set by Jesus Christ? Do you promise to exercise faithful stewardship of God's resources entrusted to you for the furtherance of God's kingdom and purposes? Do you accept that the doctrines and principles of the standards of the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church are founded upon the Scriptures? In loving obedience, do you submit yourself to the government and discipline of this church, promising to seek the peace, purity, and prosperity of this congregation as long as you are a member of it? And let me just add, before you give your answer, that seventh vow is where the rubber hits the road in the unity of the church. The submission, the authorities that the Lord Jesus has put over you is a serious vow, but it is a wonderful vow when we walk in the light. And so, mem uh, confessing members of Grace Presbyterian Church, what is your answer? We do. We do. Amen. Then I will declare the sentence of reception. And before I do that, we need someone with a good camera to take a picture of the team with the elders and the deacons and the pastor up front for our denominational magazine. <laughs> So, uh, in all humility, by the authority of the Mississippi Valley Presbytery, I now declare that Grace Presbyterian Church is duly received as a congregation of the Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Shall we make the doxology our prayer? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. with our brothers in the ARP, 
You've now met two of the other ministers that represent that fellowship.